Let me introduce our cast before we start. Michal Yoshinsky, playwright, and playing the role of the author Chaim Einspruch. Uh, I'll tell you more about him afterwards because he's the one who's going to be answering questions. Sruli Rosenberg, playing the role of the printer, Gabe Fly. Melissa Weiss, playing the role of Gabe's friend and activist, Sadie Meyerson. And I will also tell you that the director, who is not on stage, is Dimitri Barcomi. So. So, this is the last scene in Act One. We are in a Yiddish printing shop in Baltimore, Maryland. The date is Christmas Eve, sixth night of Hanukkah, 1940. The down on his luck printer, Gabe, is an Eastern European Jew who has sought out a new life, a new opportunity in America, though he had to leave his mother behind in Eastern Europe. With the war having reached their home shtetl, he hasn't heard from her in months. Uh, an intriguing new customer, also from Yiddish-speaking Eastern Europe, Europe, has recently made Gabe's acquaintance. And this is Chaim Henry Einspruch, who wishes Gabe to print his new manuscript, a Yiddish book that he's been working on for years. A third character, Gabe's longtime friend, the American-born anti-fascist organizer, Sadie Meyerson, may complicate things with the deeper knowledge she has about this mysterious Einspruch. That's the scene you're going to see, and afterwards you will hear what happens next. <laughs> Die heilige jüdische Sprache ist mir sehr teuer. Heilig? Ja, sicher. Weil mir nichts sie für heilige Zwecken. Nee, es dachte ich mir, dass ich der Einzige bin, der die Jüdigkeit Ich weiß. Jüdische Leiter sind ein paar Anarchie in Baltimore. Keine ist die einzige jüdische Brücke in der Baltimore. Man muss es dann noch suchen. Es sei wie es heißt, dass ich das hier auch gehabt habe, in den Schaf ein. Oh, keine, kein lebendiger Seel wie die Steine ist. Was kehrt ihr das heute, das abbrennt? Ah, Mensch, mir sagt das nicht. Sie nicht der Jante, wenn es nicht startet, du nicht verdienen, nicht verdienst. Sei wie sein Gott, ich nicht der Jante, wenn er nicht die Verdienung kann gehen. Nebuch? Nee, Nebuch für mich. Nicht gefällt mir. Ist was, er beskocht sich? Na, na, wo ist er? Nun, der Zeil, der Zeil, was tut sich in jedes Mal für die jüdische Druckerei? Ja, da kann ich nicht mehr. Born in Baltimore, raised everywhere. As yeah, you felt me. Yeah, this is a Ich 
Abdir und Abdika Gemeindes. Seid ich sein? Du hast gesagt, dass er vor Sachen kommt und nicht Tacke. Wo sind die anderen? Ah, wo ist es doch etwas? Nur das ist eine Frage von der Weise der Mann. Ein Agent von der Verlage, der die Finger mit der Fußpflege zerricht, mit der gedrückten Reklame von der Bibel, die da gar nicht alt herausgehen. Du wolltest in so einer Anstellung der Reklame von Unrechten mit das Bücher in Bichler, das ist eine Unabrückung der Unschaft. Wo sei es alle nicht sein? Bravo! Und du wirst es kommen. Ah, well, we're ready. We're going to have a few minutes to see if we're going to have a few minutes. We're going to have a few minutes to see if we're going to have a few minutes. Aha, a few minutes to see if we're going to have a few minutes. No, it's not bad. 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 No, it's not bad. 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 Nicht Sadie Meyer, sondern Sadie? Wo soll sie das denn? Ich weiß, sie sieht immer leicht, wenn sie sich mit Plakaten und Bibelblättern Bei ihm eine Festatze, wo soll sie doch gut meine Hand machen? Ich habe es frei. Warte, sorry. Die hat sich mir gedacht, eine interessante Verschwörung. Feier, nein? Ja, danke Feier. Hitz sich, dass keine noch gebrieft wird. Nun. Genug Schwenk von Sitzen da mit Lady Hand. Genug Schwenk von mich kommen gegen Lady die Gesellen in Schach. Einspruch ist da. Er hat bei mir an Arbeit. An Arbeit, was ich hier gemacht habe, bei Gora vernommene Menschen und mit Geld zu kreien, Leute. Ich habe schon gesagt, dass sie kreien, wo die Männer auch noch nicht. Das habe ich heute. Ja. Du, es, es, sind doch alle gelegen, die an Ondeng von dem Ness machen schön. Ja, der Ness ist nur so sehr gehabt, da hat es ein Eis. Der Ness ist, was ich und ich dir von ihm gebrieft. Der, was wird mir helfen, abzudrücken, die größte Arbeit von meinem Leben. Ah, warte nur, aber nicht, weil er ist ein schönes Licht, wenn du da nicht so hart findest, dass du sagst, und sie sind kein Mann. Haben wir das jetzt durch? Ich will deinen Schritt nicht auf der Rechnung. Gabriel, du kennst mich schon dutzen. Nein, wir essen Donuts, wir Menschen haben nicht gelegt, wir werden schon gut überreden. Es gibt nicht, ne? Du hast Menschen nicht mehr kein. Aber was nicht? Und lassen die Kinder kommen gelegt, weil ich dir verscheine in meinem Plan von unserem Zusammenhang. Denkst du doch nicht? Was war eine Frage, die ich gedenke? Aber ich gedenke, ich bin doch ein Jeb, ne? Ist lange nicht. Baruch Ato Aleishem, Eloi Feinu Melech Oilo, Asher Kideshonu Ben Mitzvoiso, Verzivonu Mehadikne, Shelchanu Koch. Er schaut ein goldener Kohl zu singen, nur die Brache, und wir singen noch etwas. Was ist dein Malibster Mismer von dem Janke? Ich denke nur, wo es ziehen. Es gefällt mir sehr. Ich weiß, dass er eine von den ältesten jüdischen Männern ist, so wie der Seide verzeiht. Also ich freilich, lichtig den Noten, ich stelle es mir an, so ich tinkel das Seide. Punkt, also ich, Bruder, wir dürfen suchen ständig das Licht. Ich habe die letzte Strafe der Mann und nur... Du schrecklich gesagt. Nur, die letzte Strafe der Mann hat gesagt, nur mit, mit einer Hilfe, als wir so sein, überlebt mit Gottes Hilfe. Zimbabwe, in einem Punkt haben alle jüdische Indien. Wir stimmen uns? Nur ja. Ich schau, wir wollen hier her. Chaschow, Zeroja, Kotschecho, Vökureif, Keitzai, Shio, Nikoho, Nik, Mazda, Mavodecho. Maimu hashu ki archu aishu veyai kaitzli mayoru dechai admoy betzar tzamoy hokai no niroyim shivu dechai admoy betzar tzamoy hokai no niroyim shivu. Bravo. Interessant, nein? Was sind die Schluss? Die Kurefkeit sei ich schief. Die Seide pflegt zu tun, dass du es verriegt sich nicht nur auf der Kimme der Gegeille, in der Soft sie in den Laden, sondern auch die Tacke auf die Schiene. Das heißt, die Häuser. Als Gott soll auch bringen, sein Soft. Das heißt, das Soft ist die blittige Herrschaft von seiner Mamine, die es voll genehm und voll genehm ist. Tacke interessant. Aber guck nur auf die Lichtlich. Am Echaien, nein, schenk bis gar. 
Wie er so weiß, die, die Schampf in der verschaltenen Mitte strahlt, sei ihr Ding. Ich verschält sie nicht, bitte. Was ist Emmes? Wir kennen sie den Nebel, die gelichtlich gemacht sind, mit dem goischen Ballacht. Es ist möglich, sie machen Pirsen, mein Herz. Sei der Pirsen, schreien sie aus der Sache, Hecke, wie sie. Hey, wenn nicht, Bruder, du wirst doch verlöschen, die Lichterlöcher. <lacht> Nun, es ist Zeit von Fred für beide Völker. Was ist denn der Meer? Was ist zu Baklob? Meh. Meck ihr euch nicht, bis nicht kein Sieg. Ist der Drucker. Und ich hab bei dir was zu drücken. Was ist der Zeil schon? Ich warte noch, wenn wir auf dem Schirr sind. Miss Sandy Meyerson hat etwas, was sie meint, dass der Baltimore Sun soll abdrucken. Etwas, was sie meint, dass sie sehr gedeiht, als die Welt soll wissen. Der Ponemis? Emmes? Ich hab euch. Etwas, was die Welt darf wissen. Nur nicht die goische Welt, nur unsere Welt, die jüdische. Unsere eigenen Brüder und Schwestern. Nie. Sie ist, dachte ich mir, das größte Schliches von dem Leben, was der Herr Gott hat mich verschanken. Nie. Der Briss hat das. Was heißt? Du weißt, Tabade, als Gott hat gemacht, der Briss hat verschnitten ein Bund mit den Kindern von Israel. Als ob sie dann abhitten seine Mitzwes, wenn sie sein Gott besonderer Eigens von zwischen alle Umweis, gar ein heilig Volk. Ich bin ein Mugel, wenn ich ein Ringel, ja. Nun gut. Aber du weißt, dass die Christen glauben, als Gott hat später gemacht einen neuen Briss mit der Menschheit. Also heißt es sehr heilig Buch, sehr Teil von Bibel, der Neue Testament im Vergleich mit unserer Alten. Und der und Neue Testament sagt, dass alle Menschen, euch Jeden, euch sie anerkennen, ihr Schuhe ist Korben, darf ihr nicht abhitten die hunderte alten Mitzwes von Talmud und Teure, weil ihr Schuhe durch ein Abgeben sein Leben, durch sein Fleisch, hat euch gelesen die Welt von Sinn. Von der Qualle von der Teuren, mit ihrem Mitzwes und Chokim. Das ist Gottes neuer Bund mit der Menschheit, sagen sie. Der Briss hat das. Das ist als Narrigkeit und Feu. Was hast du mit dem mit dem Mist? Ich habe es, äh, es, es ist nicht kein Mist. Es ist mistisch. Was hast du mit dem mit dem? Ich habe es übergesetzt auf Jiddisch. Ich mach Krüsig. Ich schwöre es dir. Jeden schwöre es nicht. Blin Eider. Ich weiß dir. Der Briss hat das. Übergesetzt von Dr. Chaim Einstein. Nimm es weg, wenn du ich will es einfach nicht tun. Ich verstehe nicht. Du bist da jeden, wo bist du gegangen mitten drin in den Vertrag, dem deutschen Bibel. Ich gewinne ihn mitten drin, ich habe jahrelang gehorbet auf dem. Von wo aus? Ich habe nicht den Meurer, Bruder. Ich habe nicht den Apikorsischen Ziel. Ich bin, so wie du sagst, da jeden und da jeden will ich auf ewig bleiben. Is? Is. Ich habe lieb meine Brüder und Schwestern. Also ich stark lieb. Kol Israel war eben sehr, sehr. Ein Jid ist verantwortlich für den Zweiten. Der Pfarrer habe ich das übergesetzt. Warum ich so ein Lieb gehabt meine Brüder und Schwestern? Also ich will das sie geben. Ich will, dass meine Brüder und Schwestern so ein kleines Sofkos auf. Leinen das Seife. Das ist nicht kein Seife. Die Mehrheit von der Welt auf Elger und halt es von den Menschen. Von unserer Heiligen Mikre. 700 Millionen Menschen herum der Welt halten, dass es kommt von einem Ebersten. Du hörst sie auf der Gas. Sie freuen sich mit sehr Jankiff. Nur für uns ist sehr safer, als ob wir ein Buch verschlossen mit sieben Schlössern. Eins von den wichtigsten Büchern in der ganzen Geschichte von der Menschheit. Und sein Inhalt ist uns Terra Incognita. Na, no, Terra, aber sie wollen streiten darauf. Aber was nicht? Das ist eine Zeit von Reus. Gefahr für unser Volk. Ein kritischer Moment in unserer Geschichte. Wir müssen wissen, wer sie sind in die zweite Hälfte der Welt. Was sie glauben, was sie glauben. Erfährst du das ist Emmes? Was ist das Emmes? Punkt der Fahrt will ich, dass meine Brüder so einen kleinen Sofa so leihen in das Sefer. Auf sehr eigenem Loschen, auf meinem Loschen, die heilige jüdische Sprache, die Lingua Franca von 10 Millionen Jeden. Mir haben gegeben der Welt eine wunderbare Matane, der Tanach. Jetzt will ich, dass wir so einen Punkt zurück haben, Matane. Ein Liebesgeschenk. Mein Übersetzung, das soll ich sie geben. Und du wirst mir helfen, Gabriel. Er hat das Tag ein Gitt geschrieben. Uralat ist ein Jiddisch, das ist äh, ganz klug. Oh, wie so viel. Gott hat mich verschonken mit 30 Keuches in unserer Sprache. Und dich mit dem Talent zum Druck. Er hat gehabt ein Plan für uns, dachte ich mir, Gabriel. Kennen Sie Es muss sein. 
Das ist eine Zeit von der Chomik Abrede. Noch mehr war offen in unserer Bedeutung und Schwestern mit Chochme. Und nicht jetzt zu wünschen und nicht mehr werden. Bis gleich. Es ist keine Schatten auf Schirr. Ich bin gar nicht okay, wie der Verspreitung auf der weltlichen Chochme. Es ich habe ein Wort, der Stockbrook in meinen Armen. Wie viel Gäste? Fünf Tausend. Wir summen. Nia? Danke! Hast du mal was? <lacht> Schkutzen geschoen! Wer von euch hat das getan? Wer von euch hat das getan? Sie können sich nicht mehr schmecken, ob ich mich nicht wieder da sind, aber schalten ein! Was? Wenn ich so aufdrücken sei, ein schmitziger Bichel. Ich so sei, prüfen sie verstehen. Ach, Mann, ich sage, Gabriel, grobe Jungen, ein solcher Delfonimlich. Sei sie im Euch, warum sie wissen nicht, was sie tun. Sei weissen. Sei weissen, als du seine jüdische Äusse jetzt ausgefahrt hast, gibt es Fans für das Weissen sein. Und verzeihen sie es genäht. Sag ihm, er hat aus dem Kirch. Wie der Galle hat seine Zahl wegen der Weise jedem, sondern der Heide sei König, sei ein Geu, und sag ihm, er ist fast schlimm. Das ist doch gerecht, das ist schrecklich. Was für ein Zähne Zwei Woche sitzen an der gelaufen. So gut sie ist mit dem Pischen mit den Augen. Pfui, ist nicht richtig mit dem Bild. Einer von den zwei ist ein Es dachte sich, als die Kälte hat, ich war drei Kopf ist Ich will die Manifestation, wo ist meine Manifestation? Wie soll ich kommen, wo eine Manifestation ist? Keine Manifestation sich nicht. Ja, was sind mit den Plakaten, die Friedblätter, die Stoßgefahren? Aber Krieg, bis man zusammen das Verkäufer ist, noch ein anderes Gewinn dabei. Ein anderer mit guten anderen Zielen, mit einem anderen Besieger, hat die Farbe eingegangen. Es hat sich hier gekämpft, zerstört die Menschen, dass ich heute zusammen dort zu kommen. Gemeinsam sich sie gehört zu mir. Nur etliche sind die Gewinn bei unserer riesigen Manifestation. Wer ist das Gewinn? Er, er, mit dem Ding aus sich hat so ein Schein der Haber. Einstach der Nationär! Miss Meyerson! Mach's doch du, Sadie. Was ist das für du, Einstach? Du traf mir nach der Ziel von der Arbeit in Insel G2. Wir arbeiten zusammen, Miss Meyerson. Ich kann auch da wieder, das wird so umdrücken für einen gut wichtigen Satz. Was war ein Bild? Der Goische Teure. Der Goische Teure. Ich bin gesetzt auf Jiddisch. Aber er hat nicht wie Idee zu missionieren, Sadie. Er will nur als. Mir jeden soll sein, etwas gebildet. Was tut sich bei der Goyen? Was mir jeden soll sein, für mich wegen dem, was tut sich bei der Goyen? Ich bist allein nicht mehr Christ, kein Mensch. Er ist nicht kein Katz, er ist nicht kein Hemd. Ich bin ein Jeden, Gabriel, der Tat ist, ich bin ein Jeden zusammen mit dem Mann. Ich pink das so. Es war sein Mann, aber es war auch ein Jeden, der Mann mit dem Joschka Pandre. Ruf ihn nicht an mit dem Namen. Sein Tat aber, hein? Das ist die erste Frage. Ihr sucht alle als Gott? Gott ist Joschkes Tappe. Joschke ist der Sinn von Gott. Nur mir, jeder, mir weiß es anders. Joschke Pandrik, ich meine immer. Du weißt doch was. Herr Rusch. Weil sein Ernste hat, äh? er ist gewählt an der schwitzte römische Soldat, Pantera. Maria, sie ist gewählt eine echte Korbe. Sie hat ihm gemisst, ob er in die Häupen hat. In der Fahrt, sie hat ihm Lichter gestellt. Äh? In der Fahrt, ich meine, Rang und Joschke Pandrik. Panteres Mamselot. Hab den Pitt hier drin. Sei du bist bereit? Aros, wenn du, ich weiß nicht wer, die Beste oder du bist die Beste, und ich hasse dich dann auch. Ich bin ein Jid, Gabriel. Und ein Jid ist ein Jid, ist ein Jid, das hast du allein gesagt, bis wir jetzt sagen. Nur ich bin ein Jid, was gleich ist, unsere engste Rettung ist durch die Schuhe. Ein Mellacher Maschier. Was wird der Game mit der Maschier von der Matuna, ha? So doch, sagen wir uns doch. Äffchen. Er hat ein Fessel hier gesprengt, ein Passig gemacht hier. Oder eine Ausrottung für nachher steht er hier in der Joppe. Sein Nachbog, es geht in dem Schiff, es ist tausend Jahre, es ist nicht gewesen. Pumperkerl, es ist doch sein Blut, was ist unser Matane? Es hat uns alle nach Abbe gewähnt, wir können alle der Lange geholen, wenn wir das lernen. Es ist nicht so, dass es war ein Blut, dass er dich von der Kapur ist, dass er endet. Und uns ist Punkt, dass er zeigt, wenn er wird zurückkommen. Was hat der Nilhain auch wieder gesagt? Hast der Gesalbte mit abgekommen in gedrückten Zeiten, wenn es werden sie stärkt, die Stadt und das Ehle kommen. Punkt in dieser Zeit ist er früher gekommen, Punkt in dieser Zeit hat er gekommen, ich komme mit seinem Greif bei ihm. Ich kenne das nicht, der Trocken, aber nur gehen, sag es nicht. Gabriel, um ihn übergeben, sein im Suris Leibes, wenn alles, was wir Herren von ihr haben, sein im Suris Reis, die Welt fährt, mich schon mit Sinne geht, wenn wir ihr weiß in unserer unglaublichen Liebe. Ich liebe mich, dein Goyo. Der Goyo 
und hab gegangen mit seinen langen Partier. Wissen die, kannst du das Ding noch stehen und nicht lieben? Das heißt Emerson Liebe. Kind, kein Genick, wenn er sagt, Liebe, weiß ich nicht. Ich habe lieb mein Volk, das weiß ich. Dein Volk hat dich lieb. Geh mal guck, du hast keinen da. Du führst das Geschäft. Was für ein Geschäft kennst du denn haben? Wie die Strucken in Baltimore in Jordan sind da. Genick schon. Mein Volk, mein Volk, meine Brüder, die Schwester, ich hab lieb mein. Mama, Mama, sie kennen euch gerade mit der Liebe von ihr Schuhen. Geh nicht schon heraus, wenn du warum? Warum bin ich nur Herrst, nicht alt wo sein, so ein Meurer, die der Welt. Herr, nur Herr, nicht alt wo sein, ein Schreck. Was rein die heilige Ruhe von der Lied, Gabriel, von der Liebe. Heus ist mir gut, dir euch. An die Wesse ist heraus, ja, das will ich allein tun. Das Lied habe ich euch lieber gesagt, gegeben. Hundert im Inselselke habe ich schon niedergesetzt. Lieder von Gläuben habe ich der Sammlung gegeben, ein paar Titel. Wir können arbeiten nach dem noch unser Brisskadasche. Herr Nor, wie schön, wie heilig. Stille Nacht, Dusche Nacht, Sohn von Gott, oh wie lacht. Lieb und sie sein heilig Gesicht bei dem rettenden Morgenlicht. Geul bei dein Gebet, geul bei dein Gebet. Stille Nacht, gedusche Nacht, schenk dein Licht, Sternkracht. Lass mir mit der Himmel schach, singen Leib unser Haar. Seht, der Geul ist da. Seht, der Geul ist da. So, what happened next? It is based on a true story. This was a real man, Chaim Einspruch, an uh, Eastern European Yiddish-speaking Jew who discovered a faith in Jesus and translated the New Testament into Yiddish. And um, in, 1940. in 1940, what a time to do it. And uh, basically, uh, no Yiddish printer would help him with this because it was so controversial, because he wasn't just doing it, as he claimed earlier to expand worldly knowledge. It was really for missionary purposes. And that's what I knew, and that's what I created this drama around. Basically, what happens next, eventually he does print the Yiddish New Testament, but on his own, because of various things that unfold between him and these characters, this printer, they form this friendship that then breaks apart, partly through the machinations of Sadie, because it turns out Sadie was the one who threw the egg at Gabe's shop uh, because she wanted to turn him against Christians and turn him against this project because, as it turns out, Einspruch uh, converted her father and took him away from her, essentially. So a lot, a lot more happens in Act Two. Uh, yeah, but that's the gist of it. Well, so... Yes. So first, I will tell you that the actors 
have already a lot of credits on the, on the Yiddish stage, and you were in a Yiddish movie as well, right, Melissa? Yeah. Um, and Michal, he was born in Detroit, not in Eastern Europe. He studied modern European history and literature at Harvard. He's a playwright, he's a singer, an actor, a teacher. His, uh, his uh, one act, the Splissdorfen Order, is uh, already being performed. He's at work on a musical. He has performed with the National Yiddish Theater of Volksbühne in, in large parts. He had the, the major part in the Kishif Machven. I don't know if any of you saw that. He was the witch. Uh, he has sung at Carnegie Hall. He lectures in Yiddish at Columbia. And his translation of the memoirs of the great actress Esther Lohol Kaminska, great, the so-called Mama of Yiddish theater, is forthcoming. This play, the Besura Lot Chaim, was uh, produced this year at the New Yiddish Rep. And the foreword said a quote, jolted the repertoire with a work that is both traditional and delightfully subversive. So that's, that's a little bit of a bio, quite a bio. Uh, I have some questions for us to start with, and then if there's time, other people can ask questions as well. Uh, because of the conference that this performance is part of, so I ask you, is Chaim anti-Semitic? Is he Jewish? Because there are Jewish anti-Semites. And if he is not anti-Semitic, is he a kind of ally? Mm. Um, yeah, I think he very much considered himself a Jew. And people can debate about whether or not he was. He was uh, born a Jew in a very from family and very much identified with Jewish culture and particularly with Yiddish culture throughout his life and felt really most at home among his fellow Jews, but religiously by faith was very much a Christian. Um, and he had this conversion in his young adulthood and Naomi Seidman, a professor has written about him. She says she doesn't find any proof that he ever actually was baptized. So in a way, he maybe didn't formally convert, but very much was, in his belief, a Christian. And there are certainly elements of what he was doing that strike me as anti-Semitic. Um, I think missionary work can tend towards a, an erasure of the belief of those they're trying to convert and a demeaning of that faith. He talks about and this is actually from his own writing that I took this phrase, the curse of the Torah, um, which he says Christianity with its new covenant was trying to take away that curse. And you see people using the same sort of rhetoric today, but he himself saw his work, I think, as allyship. Um, he was doing this at the time of the Holocaust in an effort he thought to help Jews, maybe this could save them. There were lots of thoughts and ideas and plans about what could save the Jews, and this was his, um, to help his people, he thought. I think many others wouldn't think of it that way. But it's a complicated story, um, yeah. Well, the fact that it takes place, that, that it takes place in, in 1940, of course, makes it, makes it, uh, more dramatic yeah. as well as, as more significant. Did it really take place in Hanukkah? That's, that's your... That's my that's own dramatic interference. Well, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, Hanukkah and Christmas time is a time for me in the United States when these religions and cultures are very much colliding every year at the same time. And I thought, what could be a more perfect season for this particular clash of cultures that Einspruch and his work presented? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I was born Hanukkah 1940. Ooh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is the implication of this play that Christians can be allies or that 
They can't. Which is what's the what's this play yeah. suggesting? I think that there it suggests the potential of allyship that with this friendship that Gabe and Chaim form with each other. And at some point in Act Two, they really do get to be friends and they're teaching each other. Gabe is teaching him the art of printing. Chaim is teaching him about Jesus. And there's sort of an exchange and a development of friendship. And it's true and sincere. And then it takes a turn somewhat. And I think maybe if there could be a lesson in it, it could be that that sort of exchange, that sharing, that teaching each other is a good thing. But when it turns into trying to force your beliefs upon the other person, force them to accept your beliefs, that becomes something uh, that's not allyship. And yeah. then, it's, then, then they're not allies. Mm. What this, you're talking about the play, what happened to the real Chaim Einspruch? The real Chaim Einspruch, so I'll show. <clears throat> This is his bris chadoshe. You see on it a Jewish star with a base and a ches on it for bris chadoshe, which is New Testament in Yiddish, in Lashon Kodesh. Um, he went on to print this book uh, in 1941 on his own. So in the course of the play, I sort of show him learning how printing is done from Gabe the printer, because the real story is that eventually he went and bought his own set of movable type and his own printing supplies and printed it on his own and spent the rest of his life um, evangelizing to Jews. He in had America. A, in America, in Baltimore, where this takes place, that's where he set up and he had a mission where it specifically was a branch of the Lutheran church. He had funding from the Lutherans and was evangelizing to Jews, trying to win conversions. And that's what he did. He also wrote other writings about Christianity for Jews. This one is Lieder von Gläuben, Hymns of Faith, which I sing his uh, Silent Night from this book in that scene. Uh, he also printed this. It's a hymnal with Yiddish language hymns about Christianity. I don't know what sort of church he imagines would have used such a hymnal, but this was his project. And he wrote other things. Yeah, also books in English teaching about Christian faith targeted towards a Jewish audience. This one is strangely enough called The Ox, The Ass, The Oyster. Um, I don't have to go into what that's about, but it relates to a parable that he starts the book with. And um, did he have an effect, in fact, on the Jewish community in Baltimore? I've never heard of him winning any conversions. I have heard stories about how he was a nuisance to the Jews of Baltimore, that he would actually stand outside synagogues on Shabbos mornings and preach um, and would pester the Jews, they thought, as they went in and out of services. Uh, so certainly he, he was remembered and he made an impact on the Jews of Baltimore. I'm not sure the sort that he anticipated or dreamed of. So when people see your play, how do they react? First of all, do they think of Chaim as a good guy, a bad guy? Mm. How do, how do yeah. they react to that? I think by the end, a sort of very complicated triple portrait is painted of these three characters. And yeah, part of why I wrote the play is when I first learned about this story, I thought how interesting and unusual and I have a real sort of aversion for what this guy did, and I kind of wanted to investigate that, and I investigated it through writing this play where it became a little more nuanced. So a lot of people actually came out, fellow Jews, Yiddishists, saying they really love Chaim, <laughs> and they uh, felt for him, which is uh, kind of nice because I didn't want to just make him out to be entirely a villain, and I wanted his, the purity of his intentions somewhat to come out, even, if I personally um, disagree with his approach. Yeah, those who didn't see the play, I think often, I, I did read comments online from people who didn't see it and saw that there was going to be a Yiddish language play about a Jewish turned Christian missionary. And they wrote um, very negative things. How dare they put on a play about this? But mostly I heard that from people who didn't actually see it. Wow, well, that's, art is powerful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how about non-Jews who saw the play? 
um, non-Jews who saw the play. I'm trying to Were think. there any? <laughs> Definitely the audience for Yiddish theater in New York is mostly Jews, although I did, hear, I did hear that the word got out to the sort of Messianic Jewish uh, community, and I know there were such types who came, Christians who practiced some form or another of Jewish ritual, and um, I, I don't know if I actually talked with any, um, because I think they came maybe somewhat discreetly, didn't want to make much of themselves, but I... I saw in a few of their blogs that they had come and that they were writing about it, yeah. Oh, then what did they write? Um, I think they wrote that they appreciated this guy's story was being told. Uh, they might have disagreed with everything that was, every uh, sort of choice that was made in portraying him. But I saw some blogs that were writing about the story of this guy and what an interesting guy he was. Um, even in Yiddish literature, he's considered a figure because of this translation, which is actually considered by Yiddish critics and literary people a very, very good and poetic translation, and the first of its kind that was made of the New Testament. Um, so he's appreciated in that way, even among Yiddish-speaking Jews. Um, yeah, there was a review by Melech Ravich, who is a Yiddish writer, in a newspaper in Mexico, a Yiddish newspaper, when the book came out. And he wrote that although he can't say that the Bris Chadoshe of Einspruch is good because it has missionary purposes and he can't consider such a thing good, he will say that it is shame because it is beautifully done. Um, yeah. Maybe, would you just translate that? Yeah, so he said it's not good, but it is beautiful. Um, and for him, there's a great distinction because he can't call such a project good because his intentions weren't good according to Ravitch. So what drew you to write plays in Yiddish? Mm. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, throughout my life, I've had a growing passion and interest in Yiddish, the language of my grandparents, and have been inspired by Yiddish literature and theater and other people creating in Yiddish, Melissa, Sruli, all of these really talented artists in the Yiddish circle today, and I think wanted to make my mark by creating. I feel like the language is living, but to really truly live, uh, new works have to be written in it, and um, that was part of my, what drove me, yeah. And I found out about this story when I was a fellow at the Yiddish Book Center in Amherst and just thought, what a sort of weird, dramatic story that could be put on stage. And so finding out about Einspruch really inspired me to write, yeah. How old were you when you started learning Yiddish? You didn't, learn, you didn't speak it as a child. No, I didn't really speak. All my grandparents spoke, and I have two grandmothers who were native Yiddish speakers, and they spoke to each other, and I listened to them speaking Yiddish, had a sort of understanding of Yiddish, but didn't start really speaking fluently until I was in my 20s. Um, now I'm in my 30s. Uh, so about 10 years ago, I started really seriously learning Yiddish and studying it and starting to work in it. But um, uh, yes, yeah, exactly. my fellow actors should also talk about their lives in Yiddish, yeah. perhaps. Ask away. <laughs> um, Right. Your, your trajectory in Yiddish is different from mine, so yeah, maybe you could tell us a bit about that. Uh, so I did grow up speaking Yiddish. Um, Yiddish was my only language for a very long time. I grew up uh, in Williamsburg, and I still use Yiddish on the daily, depending on who I speak to. And um, so I kind of came full circle. Yiddish. I wanted to um, study in university, so eventually I decided I am not, uh, I'll put Yiddish aside, and I studied English, and, and for a very long time, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I stopped reading in Yiddish as well. And a few years ago, I heard about secular Yiddish, and I didn't understand it, because for me, Yiddish was always, um, it was a religious language. It was like, we speak Yiddish because we're different. We grow up, we, we, you know, we're religious, we're Jewish, so we speak Yiddish. And it wasn't um, 
that was it. It wasn't used for academic research or anything else or, or for art. And when I heard of secular Yiddish and I went to, to a, a few of the Yiddish conferences and I heard about Yiddish New York and so forth, so I, I got reintroduced to it. And eventually I, I heard about a play and I heard about New Yiddish rap and Yiddish theater and all that. And I kind of like, I, my affection was reborn towards it. So that's my Yiddish uh, history in short. Yeah, pass it. Pass it. So are you going to interview me? <laughs> okay. So I also grew up Hasidish. Wow. Um, and I, so Yiddish, I'm a native Yiddish speaker. Um, but I started working as an actor and a writer in Yiddish later on. It, took, it also took me a little bit of time to recognize the Yiddish art scene, I guess, art theater scene, that there was so much richness that I wasn't aware of and delving into uh, writers that, you know, in the scene and meeting actors who have done these amazing plays and getting to read all of that. And that inspired me to get back into it, so, but I first uh, studied acting, and I did not think it would include my Yiddish upbringing at all. So it's been cool to bring both of those parts of myself to the theater. Yeah. For well, Yiddish, the history of Yiddish theater, there were war Christians that went to it and, before, and participated in it. Um, and there was always an itch to that what was produced in the theater would be not just that it would be good, but it would be like the good. That was the criterion. Does it feel like that to you guys? Does it feel goyish? No. Uh, um, does it feel goyish? No, I mean, I mean uh, for me, it's Yiddish theater is a way to really connect and celebrate with my Jewishness. Um, I actually had a thought the other day, like, because I was on my way to see a Jewish play, a Jewish themed play in English. And I thought to myself, why am I seeing a Jewish play in English? Like, I, I sort of felt like if I go to shul, I want to hear prayers in Hebrew, the language that we speak to God in. And if I see Jewish theater, I want to see it in a Jewish language. Um, I don't think that's totally true. I do appreciate English language works, and I realize we speak English here in America for the most part, but there's something that's very true and connected and soulful about seeing a play on Jewish themes in the language that really rings with Jewishness, with Yiddishkeit. Yeah. Good answer. Hmm. Do, do people have questions if there are things you would like to ask? Yes. Oh, you've got a microphone. Good. In, in the previous segment, when I asked Ted Deutsch about Christian Zionism, I had a little knowledge that we're going to actually kind of talk about that in a way. So I, I was worried about that I asked the right question there, but I think I did. It's a really personal story for me in kind of a reverse way. Um, the first synagogue I ever went into was in Baltimore in 2011. And uh, I was trying to make a decision at that point, should I become Jewish or not? <laughs> and, uh, and Baltimore's cool because at one time in American history, it had the largest per capita Jewish population. Yeah, now it's New York, Boston, and Miami are the, the big Jewish cities. But Baltimore was a big immigration port. Well, they had the Germans from yes. that's yeah. why. Yeah. And I'm glad I went into that shul that day. It was an Orthodox one. I eventually became Reformed Jew. But had I not had a good experience there, um, I probably would have never joined the tribe. And uh, it was just great to hear you communicating this way because this is the story of America. Uh, it's immigration, it's assimilation. Um, you know, how do you assimilate in America? You don't speak Yiddish, you maybe speak English or the vernacular of another country. And even within our community, Yiddish is a declining type of language. Thanks for reviving it but we don't speak Yiddish for the most part. We're really pressured to speak Israeli uh, uh, 
Hebrew, so um, not Yiddish. Mm. So um, thank you very much. That was really moving and a uh, very personal story for me too. And it's cool you're from Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing your experience. Do you have a, a connection that you can articulate between the play, well, between, you wrote the play a few years ago, and it takes place 1940, and here we are, 2024. Do you see, do you see it as relevant in particular, or just relevant the way a good play is always relevant? I think for me it's more the latter. I didn't write it at all in the midst of the current war and what's happening in the world. Um, but certainly people who came to it, we performed it this past December and January, certainly people who came to it told me after that they, it was very powerful to them in certain ways because they couldn't stop thinking about what was happening right now and then what we're talking about in the play. Um, because we do talk about things in the play that sound a bit like things that are happening now. Just, I guess uh, one way it sort of connects is we have all these people here arguing with each other, fighting with each other. What do we do to save people? What do we do to help? And um, turning on each other for their different approaches. And you have that in the play. There's this great crisis happening overseas and the people here in America are wondering, what do we do? And it becomes very, very contentious. And um, yeah. Um, I also think it's um, just, just it, I think it's the same question of what does it mean to be Jewish? And I think we always, what is our responsibility? What does that mean? And I think it's that same thing, I think is one of those things, those themes that are always timely. Because the things that I got, the responses that I got after the show, was a lot of that. It's so timely, it's so timely, it's so timely. And I think, I think it's the kind of play that would always be timely, those kinds of themes. Yeah. Are there, yes. Um, thanks. Um, I'm an actor and a lot of uh, discussion, especially in the last few years, amongst Jewish actors and uh, producers and playwrights has been that a lot of our stories are about Jewish trauma. Uh, the jobs that require Jewish actors are about our trauma and that we'd love to see, or otherwise the Jewish characters are uh, um, caricatures of Jews in normal stories. Um, and I'm curious, do you see Yiddish as a vehicle for writing quintessentially Jewish stories or have you explored normal sort of stories that happen to be Jewish characters speaking Yiddish? Um, well, I directed a play that was a Yiddish fantasy play just set in a forest. It was called Nachtsfeld by Nacht, After Midnight. And it was about forest spirits that come to life after midnight. And it really was, it was by a Yiddish playwright, of course, a Jew, but really was not on Jewish themes. I directed that with young people and um, my grandma, I told her about it and she said, why would you choose a play that has nothing to do with Jews? Um, but to me, that's what's special about Yiddish is whatever you do is in a way going to be about Jews, whether or not the plot is about that. Um, I think about the modernist poets in New York in the 30s, the Junge, and they were writing on non-Jewish themes. That was their whole sort of approach but they felt that Yiddish is inherently Jewish. So whatever they create will be Jewish and they can write about whatever they like, about Greek mythology, and it'll still have this core of Jewishness. So that's what's nice about Yiddish. Um, but lately I have been writing yeah, stories about Jews because I feel it's, Yiddish is really, yeah, it is the perfect idiom for those stories. But, yeah. I wonder, um, I put, I put some images of Einsbruch, I forgot to show them, but I thought we might just show. Okay, so here are just some type. We actually used Einsbruch's movable type in our production, um, which the Yiddish Book Center owns, and they lent it to us for using it in the production, his own letters, where we were actually using his props on stage. Um, his New Testament, uh, other books of his, When Jews Face Christ is a particularly piquant title, I think. Um, and here's Einspruch, him as a young man on the left and right, him older in the middle, um, the man with the book. 
Uh, but here he is. Um, yeah, this is a, there, here he is printing, his finding type to print his New Testament. Um, there's an article about him, Lutheran minister prints New Testament in Yiddish. The Reverend Dr. Henry Einspruch has shown oiling the monotype machine in which he's setting up his own translation of the New Testament into Yiddish. Um, and some photos of all of us and the articles that were written about us uh, doing the show, which we did, yeah, at the Theater for the New City in the East Village. Yeah, and there you see another actor there, also you saw Cerulee, but we had two actors who were alternating in the role of Gabe. The other is Josh Horowitz, yeah. And it was terrific. Are there any more questions? Yes, did you all hear what he said? That's a very good way to end at this, at this convening. He said that all the allies that you have are, are it's all good, it's all good. Are we done? Tomorrow? I just wanted so. uh, to make a comment more than a question, which is like a, a little bit of a weird whiplash that, uh, you know, Yiddish is in my heritage, uh, my father spoke Yiddish, my grandparents did, I spoke Spanish with my father. Uh, so when I hear a revitalization, it's like, wow, that's part of me. And at the same time, it's so, it's unfamiliar and the Christian hymns are more familiar. Mm. Uh, and so uh, I just wonder if you heard in terms of like where I can identify you know, it's, it's a weird, strange uh, whiplash of identification where I want to identify with the Yiddish, but instead I'm identifying more with the Christian hymns because that's more familiar with me. So uh, we're, what, what are your thoughts about, to put this into a question, where the audience should be or shouldn't be identifying? Yeah, I think what you say is really meaningful. I think the audience will identify however throughout, and it is kind of a whiplash situation. I had a friend who say, said to me, he really loved the play, and it made him feel very nervous the whole time. Um, because it was, he was being pulled in many different directions, and he was never quite sure how to feel. Um, and I think that's part of what I was going for. I think there can be something productive in that sort of discomfort. Um, yeah, so I'd say that's an approach, uh, a reaction that I like, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you to, uh, to Nama, uh, to Michal, to Sruli. Uh, I remember your name in the play. Melissa Weiss. Huh? Melissa Weiss. Melissa, Melissa. And, uh, and to Dimitri, who is behind the scenes, right? And running super and, titles. Um, Dr. David Kramer for facilitating uh, your all being here. And something I should have said earlier, I feel a little bad about that when there were more people here, speaking of behind the scenes, Larry Camiola and Chris Hickey in the booth back there taking care of all the sound and the visuals. We should... Yashikaya. Thank you.